The reason why we are in the state we are in is because we cannot trust our elites. We cannot trust our leadership class. They all know climate change is real. They are informed by the best scientists. Donald Trump himself, no matter what he tweets, knows that climate change is real. He has had to alter the designs of his golf courses because of sea level rise. What he believes, as so many people in his class believe, is that his wealth will keep him safe. Who has the dirtiest industries in their backyards? Whose kids have asthma? Uh, where you have cancer clusters? These are overwhelmingly poor working class communities in the United States. It's overwhelmingly communities of color, but it's many immigrant communities um, in the UK as well. As we transition from fossil fuels to renewable energy, those communities that got the worst deal that have been underinvested for many decades should own and control their own renewable energy projects, get the jobs, get the skills, get the profits to pay for services in their communities. That's a core principle of climate justice. Because of the fact that we have responded to the climate crisis in neoliberal ways, ways that deferred our responsibility to the markets and said, let's let the market fix it. Climate action has come to be associated with increasing the cost of living for working people. And that's a big problem because this has happened 40 years into an economic project that has been attacking the standard of living for working people for a long time. It has outsourced their jobs. It has attacked their social safety nets. It has attacked job security. And so working people are really, really stressed and overburdened. And so when you add on top of that, the idea that they are the ones that are gonna to have to bear the burden of climate action, you get revolt. And we saw that in Paris and across France when Emmanuel Macron, who had attacked labor rights, imposed economic austerity, handed out tax breaks for the wealthy, decided that his climate action was going to be a tax on petrol. And lo and behold, you had a huge revolt and he ended up having to roll it back. The slogan of the Yellow Vest movement in France was, you care about the end of the world, we care about the end of the month. And what a Green New Deal says is everybody has the right to care about both. And here is how we are going to radically lower emissions in line with science, completely decarbonize our economies, but do it in a way that leaves no worker behind. Workers who are transitioning from high carbon sectors to green sectors need to have their salaries protected in this economy that is gonna have a whole hell of a lot of work because we're talking about transitioning the building blocks of our economy, how we move ourselves around our transportation systems, how we live, and of course our energy grid. And the task of a Green New Deal is to make sure that those jobs pay well and that they protect workers. A Green New Deal is also based on the core principle that the people who were hurt the most by the extractive economy need to benefit from the transition and need to democratically participate in designing that transition. Another core principle of climate justice is that the polluters have to pay for a whole hell of a lot of this transition. Why should Shell and Exxon have all the profits? We need progressive carbon pricing and we are gonna need to get the profits from these companies to pay for this transition. Another principle of climate justice is that it doesn't end at our borders. Climate change is a crisis that is global in nature and it is profoundly unjust. The people who did the most to create the crisis are most protected from its impacts, while the people who did the least to create the crisis are most vulnerable to those impacts. So we need to pay our climate debts, which means that we need to help poor countries uh, to deal with the impacts of climate change, to leapfrog to clean energy, and we need to open our borders to many more refugees and migrants who, if they are forced to move, have a right to safety, and we need to recognize that. We need to understand that it is dangerous to simply sound an alarm and create a vacuum where other people can define how to respond to the emergency, because we live in a time not just of the fires of climate disruption. We also live in a time of the fires of rising hate and fascism. And there are plenty of people who would be willing to exploit the political opening that our movements are creating to step in and say, well, the solution to this crisis is to lock down our borders, is to not let anybody else in, is to protect our own because we think we're better than others. We've seen it expressed through tremendous violence. We saw it in Christchurch, New Zealand, when on March 15th, a mass shooter went into two mosques and gunned down Muslims at prayer. 
He wrote a manifesto and he identified himself as an ethno-nationalist eco-fascist. He inspired another mass shooter in El Paso, Texas. We have to learn from history and understand that when you sound the alarm in a time of peril like ours, you also have a responsibility to step forward with solutions. And we are lucky because a lot of people have been developing those solutions because they are most impacted by the crisis and we have to be led by them. I'm Naomi Klein. I'm the author of On Fire, The Burning Case for a Green New Deal. And I'd like to ask you to support the future of journalism. Support Double Down on Patreon.